We're going to check in with Doug now. He's yeah. live at RIT this morning. The car of the birthday, future. Lucy. Yeah, oh, this great. is really cool stuff, and it's all happening now. We're going to meet some of these uh, uh, RIT students and talk about what they're working on. But first, I got to do this. Norma, I want you to meet Matt. <gasps> oh, my God. Does he look like a Matt you know? Oh, Terry and I really have the same does. Hi, Matt. You, so anything scary. you'd like to say? Uh, good, nor good morning, Norma. Do I look like someone you know? <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, a man says, I know yes, very well. Yeah, I just, Terry and I Wait, can I see him again? Wait. Yeah, she wants to see him again. Ah! <laughs> are you, are you like sure that? you know where your husband is right now? He here? looks just oh, like my man. I cannot anyway. believe that. That's funny. <laughs> All right, now let's get, let's get down to the business at hand here. Corey, come on in here. Corey right. Allen, you started this, this uh, club a while ago, right. and now you're together and you're going to a competition in California in April. Tell me a little bit about the competition. Yes. Well, the, uh, the competition the competition is the Shell Eco Marathon, and it's held out the California Speedway in California, of course. Yeah. And the purpose is to build a vehicle that goes the farthest on the least fuel. Okay. As you said, the record's 2,800. Uh, we can't guarantee 2,800, but we're certainly going to try and get up there. And there's different categories of vehicles. Some of them are solar powered. They might have hydrogen power, but this one is strictly going to be fuel powered. Yes, right? this one will be powered by gasoline. Uh, there's also a diesel class, I believe, mm -hmm. solar, as you said. Uh, even a hydrogen fuel cell class. And you were telling me a few seconds ago, this looks like it's a long way from ready to go, but yeah. it's actually not that far from being it's ready to go. It's not that far. It, this weekend, we could actually fire it up and drive it around the, uh, around the parking lot. Uh, also, this week we'll be finishing up the uh, windshield that goes on. Yeah. Uh, essentially, just come up here and just start to look like a yeah. vehicle. Okay. Start to look more and more like a vehicle. Tom, what are you doing over there? I know everything is uh, small compared to a normal yes, sized is. engine. All that. What's the, what? Here's the piston inside of the C3 scooter motor that we have. Yeah. And if you want to see in comparison, a regular lawnmower engine's piston. That's a lawnmower engine that is. piston. This is okay. 148 cc's. And that's only 50 cc's. And later on, I'm going to show them the fuel tank because that's really impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, right now, I'm going to put on the fan onto the flywheel. Uh huh. And what this does is help with a little bit of cooling of the engine. One of the th themes of, of an education at RIT is innovation. And Corey, I know this kind of qualifies because you guys could be taking the stuff you're learning in this competition and applying it in the real world real fast, couldn't you? Oh yes, definitely. Um, my experience and other our team members' experience we've uh, used in co-ops. You know, I've had a co-op with Toyota. Yeah. And, you know, some of the innovative things about this is uh, this is a preventative safety measure. These lights, they're not just up there for show. Uh -huh. A lot of the vehicles are small in this competition and have poor visibility. So as we pass them, we have to blow the horn. And the purpose of the lights is we can flash these lights to get their attention wow. as we pass by them. I thought it was just decoration. Okay, we got to go. But when we come back in our next half hour, I've got to show you the fuel tank that is going to power this thing around that track in California. Yeah, you wonder how big it is or how small it is really in this case. So, all right, thank you so much, Doug.